Look at these beautiful paintings in this book. They are so intricate and colorful, Anuja. Take a look. Aren't these Madhubani paintings? Yeah. And these are really amazing art pieces. Don't you think that our country is abundant with cultural heritage and one can just never get enough of it? Yes. I think there's a saying in Hindi for the cultural diversity of our country. Kos kos par bagle pani, char kos par vani. Yeah, I've heard it too. Welcome everyone to Jashne Azadi podcast brought to you by the Publications Division of Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. This is episode number 16 and you must have guessed it by now that we are going to talk about the book Madhubani painting. I recently got to know that till half a century ago this wonderful folk visual art tradition was unknown to the world. Indeed In 1934 a tragic earthquake devastated most of the villages in northern Bihar. It was then that a team led by a British colonial officer W G Archer visited the villages to make an extensive survey for future reconstruction. There on the collapsed wall Archer found some paintings. He photographed them and published an extensive article in the Art and Culture Journal Marg. As the name suggests The origin of the style could be traced back to the Mithila region and a village named Madhuban in North Bihar. Right. And although Archer's article might have attracted the art enthusiasts towards this genre of art and brought it to the world table, eventually it was the government of India that worked towards popularizing the Madhubani art form among the masses. Wow. Initially, women used wet mud or cow dung coated walls to paint the imageries using their traditionally handed down skills. However, the government took the initiative to train the Mithila women to experiment with various portable contemporary mediums like canvas, fabric, paper and boards. In fact, today Madhubani paintings have admirers all over the world. Important museums like Arts and Craft Museum in New Delhi, Chandradhari Mithila Museum in Darbhanga, Museum of Sacred Art in Belgium, Mithila Museum in Japan, Museum of Norway and so on house large collections of Madhubani paintings. Belgium and Japan having Mithila paintings that's really interesting. The book we are looking at today Madhubani painting is authored by the famous author Mulkraj Anand. Mulkraj Anand reveals the happiness of the naive paintings by Madhubani women and men in this book. The book highlights that Madhubani paintings mostly depict people and the association with scenes of nature and deities from ancient epics you're right in fact i'm seeing in this book the paintings are so authentic madhubani painters used twigs brushes and naturally procured pigments for painting their images even after shifting from wet mud walls to paper the original madhubani artist stick to the traditional painting materials and tools Hindu deities, natural objects like the sun, moon and religious plants like tulsi are also widely painted along with the scenes from the royal court and social events like weddings. Floral, animal and bird motifs, geometrical designs are used to fill up all the gaps. And I'm seeing this book is filled with several paintings that beautifully illustrate all these themes and designs. The author has provided a lens to the readers to understand how the paintings are associated with the Madhubani paintings not only as an art form but also as a simple ritual of their daily lives. Really one can just feel it as they go through the book. For instance, page number 20 showcases a painting of a lotus shaped mandala which is an artist's composition of the cosmos. The sun, moon and space have been recreated in a circle indicating harmony. The author also tells us more about local painters and their style of painting and conditions through this book. I think that's the beauty of any art form. Its value as a form of personal expression. True. The skill is handed down the generations and hence the traditional designs and patterns are widely maintained. Like double line contours, big eyes gazing happily at the viewers, predominant use of earthy colors like blue, green, pink, orange and red. A host of imageries are culled from myths and folklore which are adapted to suit their own style. Myths. 
just reminded me that we almost forgot to tell our listeners the story about this art form. Yes, and that's an interesting one. So, according to the myths, the king of Mithila, Janak, while preparing for the marriage of his daughter Sita, had asked the women of his kingdom to paint their houses with beautiful pictures. The king was so liberal that he gave permission to them to choose any theme that they wanted to paint. Despite that, women of the kingdom mostly stuck to the idea of fertility and procreation, celebration of nature and adulation of gods as the royal order was given during an auspicious marriage ceremony. And that is how it is believed Madhubani or Mithila paintings originated. And see, till date it stands distinct amongst a host of Indian folk and tribal traditions of paintings. Absolutely. As the saying goes, If you could say it in words, there would be no reason to paint. Right. This book contains less texts and more original Madhubani paintings that showcase the treasure of Indian folk art. The book, having 58 pages and more than 45 paintings, is a treat to any art lover's eyes. Definitely. And today, many contemporary artists, both self-trained and academically educated, practice Madhubani painting as part of their experimentation with visual linguistics, as well as for pure pleasure. And today, many Madhubani artists have got national recognition from the government as well. That's amazing. Even both public and private art promoting agencies today are considering Madhubani painting as one of the definitive cultural contributions of India to the world and promote the Madhubani paintings on national and international platforms with respect and work. That's really interesting. Um, I think we can go on and on about this beautiful art form. It's really beautiful. Uh, But now I think it's time to wrap up the episode. (laughs) You're right, Anuja. I think indeed it is time to wrap up. We will meet you in the next episode. This is Anisha and Anuja signing off. Till then, keep reading and exploring. And yes, don't forget to follow Publications Division on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. You will find all these handles in the description below. Namaskar. Namaskar.